Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam invites the Banu Shayban to Islam. Hadrat Ali bin Abi Talib radhiyallahu anhu says, when Allah commanded his Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam to present himself to the Arab tribes, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam left for Mina with me and Hadrat Abu Bakr radhiyallahu anhu. When we reached a gathering of Arabs, Hadrat Abu Bakr radhiyallahu anhu would approach them first and greet them. Hadrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was always one to take the in- initiative and was extremely proficient in his knowledge of each Arab tribe's lineage. He asked the people, Where are you people from? They replied, From the Rabi'ah tribe. He then asked, From which family of the Rabi'ah tribe? Hadrat Ali radiallahu anhu then, con- then continues the lengthy narration until he reached the words, we then reached a gathering filled with an air of respect where there, there sat several lead elders of high status and eminence. Hadrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was always one to take the initiative, so he approached them and greeted them. When he asked them where they came from, they replied that they were from the Banu Shaiban bin Ta'daba tribe. Hadrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu then turned to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and said, May my parents be sacrificed for you. There are none more respectable in their tribe than these men. Among them were Mafruq bin Amr, Hani bin Kabisa, Muthanna bin Haritha, and Nu'man bin Shariq. The closest to Hadrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu from them was Mafruq bin Amr, who was also the most eloquent speaker from among the tribe. He wore two locks of hair that fell on his chest and he sat closest to Hadrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Continuing with the narration, Hadrat Adi radiallahu anhu says that Hadrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu asked Mafruq, How large are your numbers? Mafruq replied, We are certainly more than a thousand and a thousand cannot be defeated for want of numbers. Hadrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu further asked, What authority do you wield? We have to work very hard, but such is the lot of every nation, he responded. Hadrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu posed a further question, saying, What are the battles like between yourselves and your enemies? Mufruq said, We are most angered when we fight and we fight fiercest, when we are angered. That is, we love war so much so that we prefer pedigreed fighting horses to children and weapons to milk-yielding camels. All help is from Allah who sometimes grants victory to us and sometimes allows others to be victorious over us. Are you not from the Quraysh? Hadrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, what if we were told that the Quraysh have the Rasul of Allah and that this is him? Mafruq said, The news has already reached us that he claims to be Allah's Rasul. Mafruq then turned to Rasulullah wasallam and said, To what are you calling, O brother of the Quraysh? Rasulullah wasallam then stepped forward and said, sat down. Hadrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu stood up and shaded Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam with his clothing. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "I call you to testify that there is none worthy of worship but the one Allah, and to testify that I am the Rasul of Allah. I am also asking you to grant me asylum, to protect me, and to assist me so that I may convey that message with which." Allah has commanded me to pass on because the Quraysh have joined forces against the deen of Allah. They re- have rejected his Rasul, have satisfied themselves with falsehood instead of the truth by Allah. But Allah is independent, worthy of all praise. To this Mas- Mafruq asked further, What else are you calling us towards, O brother of the Quraysh? To this, Rasulullah sallallahu recited the following verse of the Qur'an, Mahfum. 
Say, draw closer. I shall recite to you the things that your Rabb has forbidden you. These are that you do not ascribe any partner to him and that you be kind towards your parents. Allah has also commanded that you do not kill or abort your children for fear of poverty. That is fearing that you will become poor by providing for them. We provide for you and for them as well, even though you may be poor. And Allah commands that you do not draw near to immoral acts that may be open and secret. And Allah commands further that you do not murder a soul which Allah has forbidden except with a right that permits you to kill him. Those who may be lawfully executed, executed are married, adulterers, murderers and male murtadeen. These are the things that Allah has emphatically commanded you so that you may understand, that is, obey and approach, that is, use or invest the wealth of the orphan who is in your care, only in a favorable, that is, fair or profitable manner until he reaches maturity. And in addition to all these commands, give full measure and weight in fairness when you trade with people. We do not place on a soul a responsibility unless it is within his, its capability. Adopt justice when you speak, the past judgment, even though it be your relative for whom or against whom you judge. And fulfill the pledge of Allah to worship Him alone. These are the things that Allah has solemnly commanded you so that you may take heed. And tell them, O Muhammad wasallam, this, that is obeying all these commands, is indeed my straight path. So follow it. Do not follow other paths, for they will deviate you from Allah's path from Islam. These are the things which Allah has solemnly commanded you, so that you may adopt, adopt taqwa. Surah An'am, verses 151 to 153. Impressed by this, Mafruq further asked, What else do you call us towards? I swear by Allah that this is not the speech of those on earth, because if it were, you would have definitely recognized it. Thereafter, Rasulullah recited the following verse of the Qur'an, the Mahfum. Verily, Allah instructs people to carry out justice, ihsan, that is, do, do things well, as well as doing everything with the consciousness that Allah is watching, and giving charity to relatives. And Allah forbids immoral behavior, evil and oppression. He advises you so that you may take heed, that is, and thereby save ourselves from ruin and Jahannam. Surah Nahal, verse 90. Mafruq exclaimed, O Quraysh, I swear by Allah that you call towards the best of character and the most beautiful actions. Without doubt, any nation that rejects you and supports others against you are certain liars. Mafruq then decided to include Hani bin Qabisa in the conversation. He therefore introduced Hani by saying, This is Hani bin Qabisa. He is our elder and in charge of our, our religious affairs. Thereafter, Hani addressed Rasulullah wasallam, saying, O oh, my Qurayshi brother, I have heard what you have to say and accept every word of it. However, I feel that if we forsake our religion to follow yours, it would be a mistake and would reflect upon the weakness of our understanding and lack of contemplation of, over the matter. The reason for this is that this is only our first meeting with each other which may not even be the last, and no one knows what the future holds. Mistakes often, often occur because of haste. In addition to this, we have people at home who would dislike that we enter into any agreement without consulting them. Therefore, you shall return, and we shall return. After, thereafter, you contemplate over your matter, and we shall contemplate 
over ours. Hani then wished to include Muthanna bin Haritha into the conversation. He therefore introduced him by uh, saying, This is Muthanna bin Haritha. He is our elder and in charge of our military affairs. Addressing Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Muthanna said, O oh, Qurayshi brother, I have listened to what you have said. I like what you said, for it appealed to me very much. However, my reply to you will be the same reply that Hani bin Qabisa has given. We find ourselves between the borders of two countries, the one in Yamama and the other in Samawa. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him on the borders of for which two countries are you situated? He replied, on one side and we have the land, the high hills and mountains of the Arabs, while on the other, while on the other side we have the land of the Persians and the rivers of the Kisra. The Kisra has permitted us to live there on condition that we do not start anything new and do not support any person who starts a new movement. The possibility is great that the Persian kings would not like that which you are calling us towards. Whereas the custom in the land of the Arabs is to forgive those who will have erred and to accept their excuse. The custom of the land of the Persians is that people who make mistakes are not forgiven nor are their excuses accepted. Therefore, if you wish to if you wish that we take your you back to our land and assist you against the Arabs, we can accept this responsibility. However, we cannot bear the responsibility of opposing the Persians. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said to them, Your reply has not been, been an evil one because you have spoken frankly. However, the only people who can establish the deen of Allah are those who protect it from every angle. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa then stood up taking the hand of Hadrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Hadrat Ali radiallahu anhu narrates further when he says that the three of them then proceeded to the Aus and Khazraj tribes and left them only after they had pledged their allegiance to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Speaking about the Aus and Khazraj tribes, Hadrat Ali radiallahu anhu says they were extremely truthful and extremely perseverant people. May Allah be pleased with all of them. Another narration states that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said to them, the only people who can establish the deen of Allah are those who protect it from every angle. Thereafter Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa added, tell me, if after a short while Allah grants you the, that is the Persian's land and their wealth and takes their women to your beds that is making them your wives and slaves, Will you then not be prepared to glorify him and proclaim him his purity? To this, Nu'man bin Shariq said, You then have our support, O brother of the Quraysh. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa then recited the verse, the mafum. O Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa We have certainly sent you as a witness, a carrier of good news to the mu'mineen that they will enjoy Jannah. A warner to the kuffar that they will suffer the punishment of Jahannam if they do not accept Iman and as a caller to Allah by His command and as an illuminating lantern. Hadrat Ali anhu says, Rasulullah then stood up taking the hand of Hadrat Abu Bakr anhu. He turned to us and said, O Ali, how excellent are the manners of the Arabs even during the time of ignorance. How noble are they. It is because of this they protect each other in life, in the life of this world. The three of them then proceeded to the Aus and Hazraj tribes and left them only after they had pledged their allegiance to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hadrat Ali radiallahu anhu says, They, the Aus and Hazraj tribes, were extremely truthful and extremely perseverant people. Rasulullah was happy with that Hadrat Abu Bakr who possessed so much knowledge about the lineage of the Arabs. Not much time had elapsed afterwards when Rasulullah 
came to his companions and said, Praise Allah abundantly because today the Banu Rabi'ah, that is amongst whom were the Banu Shaiban tribe, have defeated, have defeated the, the, the Persians. They have killed the Persian leaders and annihilated their armies. Allah has assisted them because of me. Another narration explains this further by stating that when the soldiers of the Banu Rabi'ah met the Persian army at a place called Quraqir, which was close to the Euphrates River, they used the name of Muhammad as their code word, because of which Allah granted them victory. After this battle, the Banu Rabi'ah entered the fold of Islam. <laughs>